I remember hearing the ox carts come in at two o'clock in the morning to collect our sewage and take it out to the farmers. So we always knew that our waste went out to become food and soil. And so when the ox carts came back in with the tofu and the vegetables and all the meats and things, you know, that was directly connected to our waste. That was the way it was. One thing's waste was another thing's food. And then coming to the States and seeing this world of abundance uh, as in contrast to the world of limits made me very sensitive to the fact of waste here in the Western culture. And so this development of a design strategy around waste equals food, using the sun for power and uh, celebrating diversity uh, had a lot to do with the fact that I grew up overseas in different conditions. Well, I work with a, a philosophy we call cradle to cradle. And I've developed it with Dr. Michael Braungart from Germany, who's a chemist. So you have an architect and a chemist. And the way we look at the world is design and chemistry. And so we say, wouldn't it be wonderful if everything that we designed was like a living thing, where you could be happy that it's growing? Instead of being worried that it's getting bigger, you're happy that it's getting bigger? These are gifts I received from Thomas Zung, who was a partner of Buckminster Fuller. And what's interesting about this one is that uh, it's a, what he called a tensegrity structure. So it's, it's uh, compression and tension. And the, these struts are in compression, the cables are in tension. But they, they hold in tension a ball at the center of this tetrahedron. And so it identifies a single point in space held in tension, which is quite amazing when you think about it. He absolutely had a system. He was one of the first thinkers uh, from a design perspective to go from the scale of the molecule to the scale of the galaxy and try and come up with a sort of a unified design theory that could transcend, you know, dimension like that. He dealt with something he calls synergetics, which was how the whole world worked. And, and then he had his tensegrity and his uh, geodesics for the earthbound objects. We had done a green roof for the Gap, for their corporate campus in San Bruno, California, which was a meadow of ancient grasses. Beautiful roof, but it was very heavy because it was a real solid meadow with this much soil under it. No one had really done a large scale, lightweight roof. I met Bill Ford and we went up to his office and looked out at the Rouge in the distance. And he asked me, do you think you can apply your ideas to that place? And I remember thinking, if we can't, you know, we're all dead. Because this has to become a living thing instead of a, a dead and dirty thing. So we basically asked the question, uh, what are the principles that we're going to use to design this place? And, and the quality workplace became the guiding principle. This is a quality workplace. And then the questions became things like quality soil, quality water, quality environments and so on. And, and once we had that, we could then set the goals. The board approved it in about a minute and a half. Uh, but it took a massive amount of, of hope and a, a massive amount of creativity, a massive amount of teamwork, and a heavy dose of leadership from Bill. I think Bill Ford opened the door to innovation and, and said, innovate your way to the solutions that are cost effective, that meet the green agenda, uh, both in economic terms and in ecological terms. My advice to young people is to travel. Get out and see the world. Um, because if you're not open to the world, you won't be able to imagine the kinds of solutions that are gonna be necessary. And there may be an essay of clues uh, out there for you as an individual 
that you could see by opening yourself to other cultures and other experiences. And I think that freedom that you're, you're giving yourself by traveling uh, is a really special gift of youth.